Don't take it off, don't be able to teach yourself. Don't take it off. Don't take it
Jiki jela ufa simba, jiki jela. Jiki jela ufa simba, jiki jela. Forward with free higher education, forward. Amanda. Comrades, my name is Kanakana Kevin Muzanani, and I have been awarded the privilege to facilitate the program on behalf of the Student Representative Council. Allow me to take this time to welcome you all to the annual Chris Honey Memorial Lecture, which seeks to interrogate and entertain as well as reflect on the life and times of Comrade Chris. We are today joined by MDM structures from Vets University and outside. We are joined by National Executive Committee members of the African National Congress, SASCO, the Young Communist League, and uh, members in good standing of the African National Congress Youth League. Without wasting any of your time, because I have seen comrades have adequately social distanced and observed protocols and COVID regulations. Without wasting any of your time, I am going to call upon the progressive dean of students of the university who is going to open and welcome all of us into this prestigious venue that this uh, institution has granted us on this day. Dean, without any wasting time, please. Program Director, uh, Minister, President of the SRC, members of the SRC, members of the various um, PYA structure students, welcome uh, to this event and a special welcome to the members of the Chris Hani family that have joined us here this afternoon. The life and times of Chris Hani serves as an inspiration and as a challenge to all of us to think about what it is that we are doing with our lives and how we are individually and collectively shaping our future. Chris Hani not only dedicated his time and his efforts to the struggle for our liberation, but he also used his intellectual capital and his thinking hat to help us interrogate and understand the times that he lived in and help to pave a way for the kind of future that he envisaged. And so on that fateful morning in April of 1993 when he was assassinated, those whom we were fighting at the time thought that they were killing a man and that they were killing his ideas with him. But little did they know in the language of today that in fact he would multiply and that we would stand more than 20 years later, almost 30 years later, and that we would commemorate his life and still breathe air into his ideals. So Minister, as we welcome you to Wits University today, we, as I said to you earlier, we, we take courage in your journey. We are inspired by, by the sacrifices that you've made. And we remain committed to those ideals that you fought for. And I, it is my hope that today we won't only sit here and talk about these things and listen to you, but that through the words and through your lessons and you challenging us, that the WITS community will take those ideals and interrogate as a student movement what it might mean for them and how they pave their way forward. So welcome to WITS, welcome to this lecture, and students, may, may you not only be inspired, but may you be challenged into action through what you will hear today. Welcome. Comrades, 
uh, as we are trying to resolve the technical issue of this microphone, okay, it's been resolved. It's been resolved. No, uh, as we are discussing issues and matters related to the fourth industrial revolution, we must educate ourselves of the industrial revolutions that precede the 4IR. And uh, I say this because this is a space of intellect where sharp thought must thrive. Comrades, the dean has officially welcomed into this space a space we all acknowledge that we must transform. We must do so through singing. We must do so through educating and empowering each other. And this is why we need more of these lectures, so that we can equip ourselves mentally and intellectually. Without wasting any of your time, I will request the, the young woman's desk to come and offer a message of support as we are commemorating Comrade Chris. And I think it is important to state that I won't be driving this program alone. I will have someone who is going to facilitate the program with me, but comrades are more than welcome to lead us in song. Because comrades, here, as much as we are in a lecture, and as much as we are academics, we must constantly remind ourselves that a revolution that comrade Chris Honey died for is in session. So I will request that comrades lead us in song and they keep us moving in that fashion as we welcome the convener of the Young Women's Desk. Thank you. Oliva, Oliva, Mfoga Tambo, We Tambo, Tina Siko Shiwe Kaz, Zabala. Oliva, Oliva, Mfoga Tambo, We Tambo, Tina Siko Shiwe Kaz, Oliva, Oliva, yeah, yeah, yeah. We tambo tina si koshi we kaya. Oliva, Oliva, foga tambo. We tambo tina si koshi we kaya. Oliva, Oliva, molo sa. Amanda. Awe tu. Malibongwe, Iga Malama Kosikazi, Jiki Jela, Ufa Simba, Jiki Jela, Aya Roka, Aya Roka, Ama Yanga Yanga. Thank you so much, uh, Comrade uh, Program Directors, the leadership of the branch of the Young Communist League for organizing this historic lecture, the SRC of this campus, leaders of various formations that are here, the Chris Honey family and institute, the management of the university, the dean and the deputy dean, just got excited when I got here to learn that your deputy dean is in fact your deputy dean. Um, when we were entering student politics, being young and naive, there were the senior comrades that were exiting at that time. We entered when they were exiting student politics. And it's good to see those produced by the mass democratic movement entering into these critical positions because they are products of the South African Student Congress and they understand the plight of students. So if your deputy dean sells out, remind him that he wore your t-shirt at a time and he championed your struggles and he must remain true to what brought him up in the movement, uh, Comrade George. I would also like to acknowledge the presence of our keynote speaker who will be introduced later, but just to greet you, Mama NDZ, the NEC member of the ANC Women's League and also the ANC. Let me just say, comrades, or protocol observed, we are happy and honored to be part of all of you that are here to commemorate the life and times of our leader and forebearer of the working class and the poor. Someone 
who spoke and stood for the downtrodden, and someone who never sold the working class and the poor until his last day. I'm excited because we continue to emphasize that political education and self-political engagements have become a rare occasion in the ranks that young people only want to come in their numbers when we are discussing names and conferences, that a, 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 a gathering of this nature has to be encouraged and those that take it serious have to be applauded and encouraged to continue and also to influence others to take sittings of this nature. So I salute all of you for being here. One thing, comrades, that distinguished comrade Chris Honey is that he was never scared of speaking the truth and that he spoke fearlessly within the discipline of the organization. From his life, we learn that, in fact, militancy is not ill discipline, that those that are militant are also able to be disciplined, and that's the kind of comrade and cadre that he was. So we have to learn that lesson because a lot of misguided anarchy in our ranks happen, and it's always attributed to being radical and militant, and that we must know that being militant is in fact not being ill-disciplined. Our youth formations today are suffocating ideas, they are suffocating discussions where a free flow of ideas is not allowed and that young people have to be aligned to certain factions and to certain views that those that are known to hold their views and to be called independent are feared and are always ensured that they don't succeed to contribute to the life of the organization. Chris Honey spoke his mind and he never feared anyone and that in his honor, young people must ensure that they allow themselves to speak their minds and that they do not use organizational bureaucracy to suffocate those that differ or even to allow them to use their talents and ideas for the growth of the organization. But when we reflect on the life of Chris Honey, it's always an opportunity for the Young Communist League that has called us here today to reflect on itself and to ensure that it takes leadership of all working class young people that are in this campus and also in all other areas. That the branch of the YCL, when us set and defined it, we thought a branch of the YCL in institutions of higher learning is not like a branch of SASCO that a branch of the in a campus should be a branch that accommodates young workers in campuses, should be a branch that has membership or security guards who are young cleaners, who are young administrators, young academics, young lecturers, all working class young people in the university community must be recruited and immediately you get it right in recruiting the kind of membership that must reflect what a young communist league branch is in a campus like this. You are going to be directed on how you attach issues. It means that this branch is not going to become a different kind of SASCO, but it will be a branch that raises issues of workers because its membership will be workers. It to be a branch that raises issues of administrators, of academics in the campus. And it will be a branch that will sharpen its ideas that in its whole conceptualization of its struggles on campus, it will be different from a SASCO branch. So it's an opportunity to reflect and to ensure that a YCL branch returns in campus to be what we dreamt of it to be when we resolved in YCL conferences that we must, we must launch branches in institutions of our learning. There are many issues that are happening, many debates in the discourse that we don't have working class leadership in. A debate around the land question needs a YCL branch to come and respond to it. A debate including on free education that a YCL branch must be able to tell us what is the idea of free education for a poor black child a working class black child who has nothing and has to go to school and not be attached to always struggling every academic year. It is the YCL that must characterize what is this free education that we are looking for. So we need a YCL that promotes ideas. During free edu I mean, during fees must fall, the YCL sat down and said, we are seeing 
young people, in fact, leaning towards identity politics. And there is a misconception that the Young Communist League, because of its primary struggle being class, is detaching itself from identity politics. That we are lucky in South Africa that the working class and the poor person is in fact in majority a black person. So the antagonisms are not there as they would exist in other countries. And that's how the YSO decided to have a forum that we called the Progressive Black Academic. A lot of people did not understand what we wanted to reconcile in those kind of forums. But we wanted to show members of the YCL that a progressive academic who's black is able to be in fact from the working class and that there are no antagonisms that are being drawn, that the YCL stays far when we are discussing identity politics in the spaces. Because a lot of students, because of their experiences, especially in historic, uh, historically uh, advantaged institutions, were becoming very awake to these identity politics that existed in their institutions. The YCLA to assert its space. So we request the YCL branch, in honor of Comrade Chris Honey, to come back and build itself, recruit all working class young people that exist in institutions of higher learning, but also to lead and provide the correct debates and the correct conceptual clarity among the issues that are confronted with by young people. With those words, comrades, would like to wish you well uh, for this program and would like to encourage you to continue to call platforms of this nature so that we encourage young people to take political education serious, that the only times we don't feel auditoriums should not be times when we discuss names and who must lead, but should also be times when there is a battle of ideas. We must lead in the battle of ideas. Amanda. Oh, say, I am going to do
of young people, we must always, uh, we must take wisdom from those who came before us. Uh, comrades, before I announce the next speaker, can we please uh, be brief in our inputs uh, due to time? Uh, that's all we'll ask. And uh, yeah, so going forward, comrades, we're going to ask that the African National Congress Youth League Vets branch come forward to offer a message of support. Uh, I must also state that NYTT was invited, but uh, there's no speaker from the NYTT. Comrade, <laughs> comrade. <laughs> Comrade Banda spoke on women's desk. She happens to be a member of the NYTT. Uh, the, the, the Youth League will uh, come and offer a message of support. Why is she no Why is she Manja,
Manja. Long live the spirit of Christ and Bissilian. Long live. Long live. Long live the spirit of Christ and Bissilian. Long live. Long live. Long live. Long live. Uh, comrades. Manja. Uh, let me greet uh, different structures who are here. Uh, the NYTT and White uh, in Young Women's Desk is here, Comrade Panda. Let me greet uh, different structures of the ANC who are here, even those I can't see. I want to greet the SRC President, Vega, Gibingalele, uh, <laughs> EYCL, for organizing and thank Comrades for organizing such a, a good program. Uh, Bingeleli Sasko and all Nomdin Waga Krizal. Thank you so much for coming. And Bingeleli Mama, Sabo Makul Mama, Ogus Waga Shela La Namsanj. Comrades, here we are remembering a militant leader, Comrade Krizal. Uh, as young people, I think we, we, there's a lot we need to learn from the generation of our oh, comrade Krizal. If you know U Morokoro Conference, it happened because him and his generation, they, when they saw in Lusanga that some comrades were living lavish lives, driving Mercedes Benz, and they had forgotten that uh, they were there uh, for the struggle to be trained and come back to fight here. They raise, they risk their lives to speak out against such things. Now we have people who are scared of speaking out against Lamakesha in power because they are scared that they won't be deployed. Comrade, these people risk their lives. They spoke out, they spoke the truth. And I think that's uh, one of the things we can take from the generation of our Comrade Krizai. Well, uh, I was there. Uh, so, I'm saying this thing is leadership, not uh, some men walking on the streets. <laughs> uh, comrades, uh, really, I'm going to be very brief and short. I think, uh, comrades, oh, there's one thing I need to say. Comrades, we're not going to influence the ANC on Twitter. We're not going to influence the ANC on Facebook. We must go to branches. Young people must go to branches. Uh, I'm speaking here as a member of uh, 160. In a city, in good standing, comrades must go to branches and contest there. MTC is coming. National Con Conference is coming. We must go there and be delegates, comrades. If there's an opportunity to take everything, you must take. And uh, uh, comrades, Manja, oh, two. Uh, no, comrades, uh, no. Thank you, dear. Come on. Amanda, Amanda, long live the undying spirit of comrade Chris Hani, long live. Long live the undying spirit of Winnie Madikizela Mandela, long live. Forward with expropriation of land without compensation. Forward. Forward with radical economic transformation. Forward. Amanda. Comrades. Amanda. Your call has been heard, comrades. I'm again. Women must rise. I am going to recuse myself from the seat and I will ask the Deputy President of the SRC to take over. Comrades, in doing so, we will ask you to lead us in song. Sasko will join and the Deputy President will take over my space going forward. Amanda! Malibongwe! Igamalamakosikazi! Thank you.
what's going on. Long live, long live, comrade Kosasa and Adamini Zuma. Long live, long live, President Cyril Ramaphosa. Long live, long live, the African National Congress. Long live, forward with free education. Forward, forward with free education. Forward, forward with radical social economic transformation. Forward, comrades, comrades. Comrades, the chairperson of SARS-CoV-2 campus, Tebulekosi, will give a message of support. We ask the chair, please be brief. Uh, I know you are passionate, we all are, so that we can uh, move on to the keynote speaker and listen to the lecture on Hu Krizan by uh, our keynote speaker, uh, Mama Hu Nkosazanadabunzu. Thank you, chair. So what do I Um, there is too much capacity in this house. There is too much capacity in this house. Um, my name is Tebolenkos uh, Kumalo, uh, the current uh, chairperson of DASCO, and uh, the chairperson. <laughs> yes, um, I so happen to be the longest serving, unwilling this <laughs> one. Um, comrades, um, I would like to first, uh, of course, acknowledge um, uh, the presence of the Dean of Student, our Dean of Student yet within Vets University. We have worked with him. He has assisted us a lot. Um, we have brought so many students through him. The office is more than alive under him. We acknowledge his presence. Uh, I would like to acknowledge, to greet particularly. Uh, I, wa I want to greet uh, someone once. You see the organization I'm coming from? This person once led it before it was known as uh, Sasko Comrades. Before it was known as Sasko, this person led uh, this organization. And I know that uh, today is here to address, and uh, she's here to address uh, a YCL uh, program. But we want to acknowledge uh, the presence of Umama. Uh, Mama, we appreciate uh, for you to take your time and be here with us, particularly on a weekend like this. And many people would have chosen to be with their families, would have chosen to do other things, but you took your time and you are here with us. And also, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of the family, of the person who brings us here, the person who unites us here today. And we say your presence is appreciated and acknowledged at Vets University. And I also would like to acknowledge the presence of the president of the ANC Women's League. Leadership, we acknowledge your presence and City Ikamala Makoskas and City Malubong and City Maibambe Ranjal. Ibambe Gash. Chini Boutwer. I would like to also greet, uh, because as SASCO, we, we, we work together and we assist each other. I would like to acknowledge the presence of 
uh, Soweto campus, uh, Soweto Sasko. Um, Soweto is very far from here. Uh, comrades took their time and they are here in their numbers. Your presence is felt. And of course, the PYA comrades, uh, different uh, house homes and different houses and structures of the PYA, uh, we greet you. Uh, thank you for taking your time to be here. And because um, they said I must be very short. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be very short. <laughs> Um, the person that brings us here, Comrade Chrisan, you know, uh, when I was first year here at VETS, um, I was once asked as to why white people, but I don't want to bring it into, into debate, but I was asked as to why Chrisan was killed and Mandela was saved. <laughs> but um, this is not the topic of discussion here. But it is a question to think about uh, going forward. Um, and I'm going to sit down. But before I sit down, I'm going to sing a song. And um, I know that uh, this song was sang in the camps of Umkonto Esiz. It's unfortunate that we're not there. But we appreciate the history that the elder generation is impacting on us. So, comrades, you'll assist me, and uh, those who don't know, you will join along. Mm. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, hi, when Yamaza, when Yamaza, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, hi, when Yamaza, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, hi, when Yamaza, Bafana Boom Kuntu. Bashaya ye alka, Bafana boom kuntu, Bafuna ye kazi, Boom kuntu yo zing ye, I win ya mazan, Boye, ho ye, I win ya mazan, Amanda, Awe tu, thank you. Malibongwe Ikamala makosi gazi Malibongwe Ikamala makosi gazi Malibongwe I'm actually glad that I have been given this opportunity because the keynote speaker here is a woman yes. and I think it's important for this program to be led by a woman Yes <laughs> Um when I was reading a bio, Yagababu Krizani, what I saw was that he said he never used to play sports because he had no time. The time he had, he dedicated his time to fight apartheid. We also don't have time to play sports because we have to fight for free education. It's unfortunate that when we fight for education, we are told that we are doing bold and the beautiful things. Mm. It's a soapy when we do it now. But I'm not going to squabble. I'm going to allow Mkoli Simzuli, the YCL district person, to come and speak. Thank you. <laughs> Makaba nesia buza huba noa bula lukre Comrades, thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm the Deputy District Secretary of the Young Communist League in Linda Javani District. 
We would like to welcome the leadership, uh, starting with the branch, but also recognize comrades in Kosasa Nazamini Zuma. Uh, don't be surprised, leader, if we don't refer to your to you in that other portfolio, uh, because this is the revolutionary program. So we recognize you in the uh, in your capacity as our comrade, not as a minister. Um, that also goes to. <laughs> Well, you know, the Young Communist League, because we are a league of the Communist Party, we will not deal with internal issues of the ANC. That must be left to the ANC members, not the Young Communist League. But nevertheless, we are still greeting comrades. Uh, we would like to also welcome Comrade Batabi, uh, the welcome leadership but also comrades, the leaders of uh, the Young Women's Desk, uh, the uh, branch of ISASCO and the Youth League. But also because comrades, we have not been recognized properly as a district. We would recognize comrade Tabi Lilinkwan uh, because she's the Deputy District Secretary, uh, Chairperson. So I think it is important to, for her to be noted, especially since she's a woman. Now, don't be surprised why Kulm in Dr. Pambi. Uh, why? <laughs> no, because one would expect that you are a member of the Young Communist League, so we will deal with it in your political classes. <laughs> now, we'll also greet the team and, and members and leaders of various MTM structures including the unit. And six countries, the local comrades, that uh, advance the Young Communist League as yet, we don't have a branch, we have a unit. Uh, and, and looking at the house, it becomes clear that soon we'll have a branch. Because we must not mislead and say there's a branch when there's no branch. Because leadership, comrades, so we branch a vessel launch over. So we must be clear around that. That uh, it's a it's, it's it's a unit. But nevertheless, comrades, <laughs> we would like to welcome the initiative of the unit led by comrade Ukon Vena. We unit to comrade Kanakana and the coordinator uh, comrade Luas. Um, for initiating this program so that young people at an institution such as IVITS are able to raise their own levels of class consciousness so that they are able to understand the conditions that today we find ourselves in because most of us know no other horror but the horrors of democracy. And that is where the question of class consciousness comes in to say that we must be in a position as young communists to raise our conscious, uh, levels of class consciousness. Now, for any young communist league structure, it becomes important that we focus on the challenges that are confronting us. And it's an institution such as this. Your struggles have largely been focusing on the struggle for free education. Sometimes, some of those are Now, Amanda, Amanda, comrades, high discipline, high discipline, leader, please uh, wrap up. Comrades, 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 we are joined, we are, comrades, we are joined by our seniors. Comrades, 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 let's be disciplined as members of, as, as students of VETS and as members of the MTM structures. We have national officials here, comrades, let's not embarrass ourselves. Lita, please wrap up so that we can move on to the next agenda item. No, thank you, uh, comrade. Uh, 
program direct. It's important that we, we raise these issues, comrades. Very, very important, especially as a district. Because the branch of the YCL does not just operate in a silo there. We are a unitary structure. And I think Comrade Precious would agree with me on this one. That uh, the Young Communist League is a unitary structure. So it must always be guided by those principles. So nevertheless... So nevertheless, Comrades, this is what I understand with the Mshambu short. So perhaps through programs like this, we will be able to raise these levels of consciousness because what cannot happen, Comrades, is for us to use Ikamalga Chris Army to play fictional politics. That we cannot allow to happen, comrades. But nevertheless, we know it, comrades, and welcome. No comrades, no comrades. You see, comrades, leadership, 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 leadership. Let us have order on this, comrades. Let us have order on this. No, let us have order on this one. No, this is my skill. Please don't sit down. No, no, no. 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 No, but you can't be telling me that. No, no. They've been disrupting me. You see that they've been disrupting me. It's what you are saying. Eh, so they must, they must listen, they must listen and wait, honey. Wait, 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 wait. No, I'm trying. You see, you see, you can't be doing this. You can't be doing this. Comrades, we are going to have order in this house. If it means that us as presiding officers of this city must call order, we are going to do so. I'm going to ask Comrade Mkolisi to excuse us from the stage. This is a gathering of the vet YCL branch. I repeat, I repeat, and you must listen to me very well. This is a gathering of the vet YCL branch. Comrades, I am going to request, I am going to request order from the back, while Comrade Mkolis is going to sit down. Comrade Mkolis, please. No, 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 we are not going to entertain you. Bonga. We are not going to entertain you. We are not going to entertain you. This is something that you are not going to entertain you, child. Yeah, clear, 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 clear. We're not going to entertain this. No, but, but we gave you platform and you didn't have to do what you did. No. What did I do? What did I do? What did I do? What did I do? Wait, wait, wait. What did I do? Yes. We are addressing this as a history. Comrade Chris, long live. Long live the undying spirit of Comrade Chris, long live. Comrades, we are not at church here. This is a political gathering. Comrades, what is happening here? What is, what is happening here? Comrades, 
political program we are going to have differing ideas here but as much as they are robust we must never allow such a space for dialogue to degenerate in the way that it degenerated we have the responsibilities as young leaders to craft a proper space that enables dialogue so much so that even those that differ with us find expression so that they are able to raise their views. We must make it clear that Comrade Chris himself was one who was never afraid of raising unpopular views. So we must create a space that enables for dialogue to occur. On those basis, I apologize for what has just transpired, but the chairman will largely touch on the current state of the YCL on the current state of the SACP. And as a vet branch which seeks to interrogate these things, maybe as people who are attending this lecture, we will have a proper understanding as to why a whole so-called district deputy secretary can behave in a manner that is behaving in, in a space that is supposed to enable dialogue. So I am going to request, before we can move any further, for the chairman to come and deliver a remark into this house. And as soon as we are, that, we are done with that, I am going to request Nosipo Hani to come and give us a remark from the family. But nonetheless, comrades, I owe it to myself to apologize for the degeneration that has transpired. But I totally understand that Mama herself and the president of the Women's League understand that here we are in politics, this is a political space, and these things happen. But however, we apologize for the violence that we witnessed here, and we can assure them that it was not supposed to degenerate like that, and it won't happen again. I apologize. Chairman. Unity, unity. Unity. Sasko, Sasko, viva! Viva! NC Women's League, viva! Ro Young Lions, Ro! Ro Young Lions, Ro! Viva Young Women's Test, viva! Viva! Uh, comrades, uh, I'd first like to greet everyone, uh, greet the Dean of Student Affairs, uh, the family of Chris Honey, 
u SRC president umpendule mfega eh the ANC Women's League president Ubatabile Jamini eh and NEC member Nkosazana Jamini Zuma and all PYA structures comrades I'd like to greet you including the Young Women's Desk and everyone who is present today including Soweto campus of UJ thank you for blessing us with your presence uh, comrades, I'm not someone who likes talking a lot, no? uh, and I'm not someone who likes going up on stage, but since I am the chairperson of the Vits YCL Chimi Matlala branch, <laughs> I will be speaking today. It might be the last time I speak as the chairperson of this branch. <laughs> <laughs> Comrades, we have gathered here today to not only commemorate the brutal assassination of Chris Hahn, but also remember him. Comrades, when we talk about Chris Hahn, comrades, we are talking about one of the greatest leaders who have ever stepped foot in this country. Comrades, we are also here together to remind ourselves that we have not uh, lived or realized the motive forces in the NDR which Chris Honey died for. Now, comrades, what are the motive forces? Mama, what are the motive forces? <laughs> comrades, in the NDR, the motive forces are blacks in general and Africans in particular. Comrades, we are equally here to remind those who killed Chris Haney, those who continue to advocate for the suppression of genuine communism, that you cannot silence an idea whose time has come. Forward with land expropriation without compensation. Forward. Forward, forward with land expropriation without compensation. Forward. Forward, forward with free education. Forward. forward. Amanda. Away to. Comrades, we are also here to tell Comrade Chris Han in spirit that we have realized one of his worst nightmares. Today, those who have liberated us are now driving around in Mercedes Benz, gathering riches, living in palaces, while the most of us, the majority, the proletariat, the working class, are still in the, in the slatters. Comrades. <laughs> uh, as the YCL, both within Vids and beyond, we have a duty to Amanda. Are we too? Or the comrades. As the YCL, both within Vids and beyond, we have a duty to genuinely introspect on the current state of affairs of the South African Communist Party. We must evaluate with honesty are the ideas and dreams of Chris Hani being lived through the current leadership of the F South African Communist Party. No. Comrades. I think I should stop reading this. I think this thing is disturbing me. Uh, comrades, currently, we have a general secretary who occupies a space in the Ministry of, of, free, of Higher Education and Science and Technology. This minister, comrades, has been minister for longer than I've been alive, by the way. I'm only 21, I might look old. Comrades. I want to ask anyone here, is communism lived through any policy of government? We need to interrogate, we need to interrogate the reason why we deploy a general secretary into government if they are not going to uh, push the ideas and the, and the policies of the communist party. Comrades, today we do not see the NTR being lived through the, the National Democratic Revolution. Comrade Chris Han, although you have left us, you are in the minds and hearts of everyone who is here today. But as I continue speaking to you, General Secretary of the Communist Party, 
our last general secretary of the Communist Party, Comrade Chris Simbisile Hani. We remember your words in the early 90s. SA can rise, but we need to ask ourselves, for whom is it rising? Is it rising for the domestic workers? Is it rising for our black brothers and sisters who sell their labor to capital? Is it rising for the thousands of black students who are financially excluded every year? Or is it rising for the bourgeoisie, the ruling class, those who own the means of production? Now, comrades, there are those who will attack me and say, why am I entering into the battles of the ANC or the SACP? These comrades do not know the history of the alliance and the role that the Communist Party plays within the alliance. Comrade Inti said, Ma'am, since we had put that poster up of you coming here, we have been called all sorts of names. We have been called factional, we have been called RET, we have been called so on and so forth. Comrades, as the Vits YCL branch, we do not support any faction. Yes. Our only faction are the domestic workers, yes. the petrol attendants, yes. the cleaners, yes. the thousands and thousands of students who are financially excluded every year. That is our faction, comrades. Yes. So, comrades, those who are unable to analyze critically will come here and jump up and down and want to cause havoc. Yes. When we invite a speaker as the YCL branch, fellow comrades, we are an advanced detachment. Yes. Comrades, comrades, we do so to bring hygiene to the politics in Africa. Yes. We do not invite people just for fun. We invite people who are going to bring hygiene. There's a lot of mess. And what we are trying to do now is to bring hygiene and to bring the MTM structures to what it once was, to what Chris Honey envisioned. Comrades, in closing, them, there are some who are not going to like what I'm going to say here. But as the YCL, we have always been principled and we will always be principled. Comrades, we will stand with all those who are oppressed across the world. We will not watch people who are victimized in the name. Comrades, we will not watch people get victimized and we will be silent about it. Two to three weeks ago, we had Israel Palestine week. I was waiting on the PUA to have a stance. They do not say anything. Comrades, the Vitz YCL branch stands in solidarity with the Palestine, the people who are violated, the people who are downtrodden and abused every day. Comrades, we are against Israel apartheid state, and we want to state that categorically. Amanda! Awe tu! Amanda! Awe tu! Viva YCL, YCL, viva! Long live! Shimi Matala, long live. Long live, Shimi Matala, long live. Long live, Chris Honey, long live. Amanda, Mata, Aruna, Manda, Ashu, Matimba, Aina. Thank you, comrades. When Foga Hani Aula Lingo Tuluina, when Foga Hani Aula Lingo Tuluina, when Foga Hani Aula Lingo Tuluina, when Foga Hani Aula
Mandla. Comrades, a family member of the Christian family is going to say a few words. Shortly after that, uh, the SRC president will introduce Umama. And uh, yes, that's how we're going to move forward, comrades. I'd also like to acknowledge the president of the ANC Women's League, Mamba Tabile Zamini. I'd also like to acknowledge the Dean of Wits. Thank you very much for having us here. I'd like to also acknowledge the SRC leadership and all the structures that are here. Thank you so much for having this program in honor of the hero of our family. My name is Nosipohani Mumzugul. So unfortunately, I was not around when the legend and the hero was burning in our streets. I was born in 1998, but there's one thing that I've learned through my personal activism journey from the great man I can call him Kulwa the great man that we can call our hero today. And I want to share that lesson with you because it's a vital lesson that we as young people, I'm 23 this year, so I'm still a young person as well. And I want to give advice to us young people. In any challenge, in any obstacle that we may face, may we be reminded that we are all united in one thing. And that is our goal. What is our goal? What is our mission? The mission is to create pathways for the younger generation to live a better life than us. My grandfather has already done what he could. We are living better lives than they did. Let us make sure that our children, our grandchildren, will lead and live better lives than we are living right now. We're talking about free education. We're talking about housing. We're talking about sanitary pads for young girls. We're talking about mental health issues for young people. As we saw recently, a young girl who committed suicide because of being bullied in schools. These are the issues my grandfather stood for. The people, the human dignity of an individual. And that's what I want us to remember. May we not put politics ahead of the individual. Remember why you came into this journey. It's not because of politics, it's because of your passion to help other people. Never lose sight of that passion. Let us be the great Chris Honey that he was. Let us be the great leaders that we have seen, that we learn from, because the younger generation needs new people to learn from, and we need to set the example. Thank you so much for your time. Amanda! Away to! Amanda! Long live the 
and dying spirits of Krasani, long live! Long live! Thank you. supposed to be very short and by very short I'm supposed to introduce the Honorable Minister then thereafter return to my seat but before I do that I must first acknowledge uh, the various structures that are in attendance here first and foremost I want to greet uh, the President uh, of the ANC Women's League Umama Ubatabile Zamini uh, then thereafter, I would like to greet uh, a representative of both the NYTT and the Young Women's Desk, uh, Comrade Panda. Oh, yes, uh, she's corrected me in the YCS. Uh, she she is in many capacities. Uh, me and her, me and her, have you know had a start that is rather known by many of you, uh, which over the years has improved. Uh, <laughs> uh, long live, but very long live. Long live. Uh, that just came in me. I, I don't know, uh, but it just came in me. Uh, when I see Comrade Precious Banda, a part of me reminds, reminds me of Comrade Bavelile, uh, who was a very revolutionary youth leader. I also want to acknowledge uh, the sitting leadership of the ANC uh, Youth League on campus, which will be taking us to an AGM. <laughs> I, I, also, I also would want uh, to greet uh, the leadership of the YCL behind me, which will be going to an AGM. <laughs> and I, 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 more, more, more than anything, I also want to, to greet the leadership of the structure that brought me into, into where I am. Uh, when I came to campus, many of you would not know my story but I am one of those students who were beneficiaries of an SRC protesting, and I registered because there was an SRC, and a, which was at the time PYA-led, and, and I, I, I happened to register in that particular fashion. So I'd like to, re, uh, to greet the leadership of SASCO uh, in various capacities from Soweto. Amanda Soweto. Uh, I'm from Soweto, by the way, so uh, it's closer to home, that side. 
and I also want to greet the, the, the branch leadership of ISASCO. Uh, more importantly, uh, university authorities in their many capacities, uh, the Dean of Students, the Deputy Dean, uh, Student Affairs, Mr. Wiseman Kumalo, uh, and more than anything, I'd like to greet the Deputy President of the SRC and the, the, the rest of the SRC collective. Uh, I think first and foremost, before I introduce the speaker, I must take at least 30 seconds of my time to remind comrades the importance of the purpose of having this particular conversation. Because it's, it's, it's easy to deviate, right, uh, and because of, of many things. And perhaps to, to point it sharply, what is happening here, or what happened much earlier, is what, frankly, or unfortunately, in fact, is happening in the ANC or in upper structures, right? And when I say this, there were leaked recordings not long ago of an NEC meeting that turned chaotic, right? And uh, so uh, this is a microcosm of what is happening at a, at a larger scale. And the purpose or the primary purpose of the lecture is to first try and address that while not suppressing it at the same time, right? We must be able to differ in ways and in, in, in forms that, that vary yet with, with an intellectual and a, 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 a respectable uh, manner. I must be able to say, look, I do not agree with how the district the deputy secretary addressed or, or did whatever it is he did. And he must be able also to conduct himself in a manner that is similar to that. That's, that's the primary basis. We can't have a conversation of free quality and decolonized education for the poor before we first can respect each other in engagement. We must be able to first engage at least in a civil manner, right? So, and the primary purpose of the lecture, I think the speaker will also address this, uh, is, is to say first and foremost, we need to shape our youth in a manner that is uncommon. We are in a, we've not had a youth league for, over, for close to 10 years, I think. So it's, it should be expected, it should be expected that the culture or the breed of youth that is produced becomes in the men or in the way we are, right? We didn't go through Mkhabul, we didn't go through political school and whatnot. And perhaps it is an opportunity, right, that Umama would lay foundation to, to say going beyond this lecture hall, what is, what is a young communist, league, young, young communist League member like? Ufasim Bunjan, what is a SASCO like? Then how do we have the conversation at a level when we say tomorrow to government or to the ANC, Comrades, we want these things adopted in this policy, and this is how we understand the policy. Then it can be taken with the weight and the seriousness it deserves. Right? So I just wanted to address those. But in, 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 in introducing the speaker, first I wanted to, to, to first provoke that thought, the idea of saying, look, thought must constantly be in motion. Right? And it is in motion. Perhaps it's not a motion we agree with, but it constantly needs to be in motion. And with time, it will be shaped. It will be, it will be shaped. Uh, Chris Hani, who convinced us today here, uh, together with OR, led a very divided ANC. It's, it wasn't as glorious as we read, we read about it in lazy articles today. We need to go to the raw, go to William Cullen. You will see how, how hard it was. OR, in fact, even resigns from leading the ANC at some point. And comrades dis decide to sit down with him to say, Chief, it's no longer about you at this point. Chris Hani is angry at Morocco, or those of you who like to refer to Morocco. Because of uh, what the chairman here has referred to, people driving Mercedes Benzes and living lavishly while the revolution is being conducted. So it's, it's not new, but perhaps, because when I introduce the speaker, you'll be aware of this, but perhaps because the speaker survived it, the president of the Women's League survived it, and many other giants in our movement who we are fortunate to still have alive today survived this, then perhaps they can help us to first diagnose what the problem is before we treat it, because we're treating something we have to diagnose. Then thereafter, only then can we get to where we want to get. But in, in short, I want to, I want to introduce now Clarice, right? Uh, and I'm going to, to start off. Uh, Clarice is, is, is a South African doctor uh, who's qualified. If any of you were, when we were pulling each other here, collapsed, I was going to push all of you away and say, hey, Clarice, please take your place. <laughs> and she would have done that. 
unfortunately, we don't have gloves, so she would have had to operate the same way she did underground. <laughs> right. Without gloves, it's a comrade who's dying. You must operate. Uh, Utler is, uh, is a, as I did say, is a, is a doctor, a uh, bi- medical doctor by profession, and an anti-apartheid activist. Uh, she currently serves as the Minister of Cooperative Coven- Governance and Traditional Affairs. We've seen a lot, those of us, there's first years here, I realize. Uh, when you watch TV, when they said co- lockdown last year, you will see the person when they come here. It's her who are saying, no, man, uh, people must not smoke. <laughs> and... <laughs> and perhaps we will make jokes about why. Manza, away too. Perhaps we'll make jokes about why people should not smoke. But if we look in between the period of 1997 and today and compare the rates, people used to die of TB in this country. We have family members who we've lost because of TB in this country, right? Uh, and perhaps COVID was also an opportunity to reinstigate that thing again for her. And she did well. And uh, it's more because most of us in here don't have that thing of medical aid. If you collapse here, uh, Jerome and myself must sign an IR. <laughs> tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow we won't find you because you've built Park Lane. I don't know how much. And I will run away and say, no, it's university responsibility. <laughs> right, so uh, that's that. And then uh, she was, and this more relevant to what I've just been saying, she was South African Minister of Health from 1994 to 1999 under President Nelson Mandela. Uh, and this, just to go back a bit, she, she's part of the, I'm referring, I'm speaking to first years on this one and second years, whom I hope they will grow within not only this lecture room, but within the campus, the movements, and their own different spaces in corporate, in business, and wherever. But she's also part of the people who said alcohol must go up, right? And there's a reason behind that. It was a cabinet decision, yes, but there's thought behind it. And the thought that informed that is a thought to save rather than to uh, do bad to the youth in our country. We know alcoholism as students here, it's a serious problem that many of us must fight in our own respective and collective capacities. Uh, and then she's also served as the Minister of Foreign Affairs under both uh, former President Tabon Pegi and former President Khalima Motlante. She then served as Minister of Home Affairs under then uh, former President Jacob Zuma. Uh, then she served as the Minister in the Presidency uh, for National Planning Commission uh, for Policy and Evaluation under President Cyril Ramaphosa. Uh, in 2013, you see, I don't think any of us, if we're lucky, maybe we'll have two people in this room. In 2013, she was lucky, you know, uh, and I'm saying lucky because there's very few people who get this thing. Very few. She was lucky in 2013, the South African government conferred the order of the Lutuli Award in gold for a contribution to the liberation struggle in South Africa. <laughs> now, 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 and I, I, I had to cite these ones because most of the comrades who've been given this honor, it's posthumously. She's still alive and she's been given that honor. So I, I would want another round of applause for that. Uh, and as I finish uh, at Codessa, Codessa has been referred to by many speakers before me. Uh, at Codessa, she was part of the uh, Gender Advisory Committee and she led, uh, there's something called the equality clause in our constitution, of saying we are equal, it's still in theory now, but eventually we hope it will come into practice. Uh, with the little uh, gains that we've had so far, we must take from where we've come and go further. And uh, she served as the chairman of SASCO, uh, did refer as uh, the deputy president of SASO, a glorious organization that has been in campuses long before most of us were alive here. Uh, I present to you Unko Sazana, Clarice, Zamini, uh, Dr. Zamini Zuma.
Students, President of this Students Council. Um, let me greet all the young people's organizations, starting with the uh, Communist Young Communist League, the ANC Youth League, the um, uh, Progressive uh, Students. Uh, and all of you co colleagues who are here, and with a special greeting to the Rani family. Let me greet my president, the president of the Women's League, uh, President Wembogoto, Yabong. Let me start by thanking the Young Communist League uh, Shimi Matlala branch for the invitation to address this Krisani Memorial Lecture. Um, the topic that I was giving is quite challenging, but it shows that we care about the movement deeply. Uh, and you care about the future of the movement, the alliance, and the country. I'm sure that Comrade Chris Arnie would have been proud that young people want to tackle these issues head on. Um, daunting as this is, we shall attempt to address it, but because it's a lecture, I will also ask questions, which I hope will be answered in the discussion. <laughs> is, there, is that allowed? Yes. Now, just to remind you what you sent to me, uh, and if you change your minds, you can let me know. The topic that you gave me, I quote, saving the soul of the ANC from the clause of factionalism and neoliberal policies, close quote. Is that the right topic? Yes. Okay. Okay, we'll address this, uh, utilizing the canvas and essence of our movement, as well as Comrade Krisa Tembisiliani and other revolutionaries. We also like to thank you for um, receiving us warmly, the Dean of the Students and all the formations here uh, welcomed us to this campus and we hope that uh, the discourse that will take place here will be memorable uh, and of course just referring to the SRC President I think it's correct that we should uh, be tolerant and debate issues. It's very important to, to, to debate, but to debate, you may agree, disagree, but we should still be respectful because we are comrades. 
uh, comrades must always respect one another. But let me say when I came here, I was also pleasantly struck um, to know that there is a plaque in honor of Dr. Mary Malashela Pagana, the first black female medical doctor in South Africa who qualified here in 1947. That our past, present, and future are coincided by Dr. Malashea Kagane Krisani Comrade Shimi is not a mere coincidence because these heroes are authentic products of our revolution. What is most outstanding is that they were products of our struggle, but they were shaped by their environment, by their lived experience, and they were driven by a deep sense of love for the people. It was Che Guevara who once said, I quote, at the risk of seeming ridiculous, let me say that the true revolutionary is guided by a great feeling of love. It is impossible to think of a genuine revolutionary lacking that quality, close quote. And Comrade Krisani was first and foremost guided by the love of the people. And of course, if you have that love as a revolutionary, uh, you cannot harm another comrade, you cannot harm another human being. You will always want to assist. Every single soldier and worker in the campus and wherever he worked or resided was well known to Comrade Chris. Comrade Chris wouldn't just pass you by and not greet you and ask you about your children or your family. He would even remember where each of them came from and would inquire on their health and their family members, sometimes mentioning the family members by name. So you can see that he was very passionate about other human beings. Born and raised in a rural village in Kofimvaba, son of a migrant worker in Oka, his reality shaped his revolutionary spirit. Thus, taking up the struggle for the downtrodden and workers was not a mere coincidence, but a result of lived experience. Commenting on his family structure, Dr. Lili, Polinikos in 1993 in one of the last interviews with Chris and he says, I quote, a family was lucky to have the whole offspring surviving. If 50% survived, that was an achievement. So out of six, three of us survived, close quote. That was the reality then because the health services were not easily accessible accessible. Women struggled to go for antenatal care, which we take for granted now. So another feature that we must emulate from Comrade Chris is that love, but that love starts from the love of family, his own family, siblings, parents, and his own children. Often times when we theorize about revolutionaries and societal transformation, we overlook the role of the family. Yet this is the most basic unit of society by which both the suffering masses and thriving capitalists survive. We all survive in our families first before we get to a community, before we go to the broader society. But also capitalism, in its essence, also survives on individualism and progress of the self. That's capitalism. So comrades, therefore, holds to logic that the pursuit of social justice and the we say socialism 
ought to be about transforming societal relations by strengthening that basic unit. In so doing, we must also transform the ownership patterns of the economy and the means of production. To quote Comrade Krisani, I quote, as long as the economy is dominated by an unelected privileged few, the case for socialism will exist. So it exists, close quote. He goes on to say, socialism is not about big concepts or heavy theory. Socialism is about decent shelter for those who are homeless. It is about water for those who have no safe drinking water. It is about health care. It is about a life of dignity for the old. It is about overcoming the huge divide between the urban and rural areas. It is about decent education for all our people. Socialism is about rolling back the tyranny of the market, close quote. That's Chris Ayn. Because sometimes we like to use big theories and actually forget practically what it means, what we should do to achieve socialism. And he's given us very simple, straightforward interpretation. Indeed, despite the gains recorded by the developmental democratic state, the tyranny of the market has gained gravitas. This fact was also noted by the outcome of the 54th conference, which noted that, I quote, despite the economic advances of the past 23 years of freedom and democracy, the legacy of colonialism and apartheid is still deeply entrenched in our society and in the structure of the South African economy. Close quote. Conference went on to note that this legacy expresses itself in racialized patterns of poverty because we know poverty. Poverty has the face, the front line of poverty is the face of an African woman. So it's racialized patterns of poverty inequality, unemployment, in land and special disparities, in infrastructure and service backlogs, in concentrated structures of ownership and control, and in the weaknesses of the SMMEs and cooperative sector. The striking feature of our economy today, as expressed by the four top 10 list, tells us. First, it says nine of the 10 richest people in South Africa are white. Now that must tell you something in a country where more than 70% of the population is black. Secondly, none of them are women. This might say something in a country, in a world, in a continent where women make up more than 50% of the population. And of course, they give birth to the other half. <laughs> Thirdly, 10 individuals account for 7.1 of our wealth, of our entire wealth. And finally, according to Oxfam, the wealthiest 1% of South Africans own 70% of the wealth. <coughs> whereas the bottom 60% only control 7% of the assets. Now, comrades, we should not be comfortable with this glaring failure of the economic system. It is also important to recall that our revolution is based on the strategic mission to liberate our country and continent from the systems of apartheid and colonialism, but here, we can see that it's still very entrenched. Of course, we always say South Africa had colonialism of a special type because the colonizer did not leave to go back to their country. No. They stayed here. They stayed here. 
In other countries, they went back to their metropolis, but here they stayed. Of course, it is because of this strategic objective that the ANC and the broader uh, alliance and MDN and liberation forces, including the Communist Party as well as the women's movement and other organizations, achieved the breakthrough in 1994 through its highs and lows Despite these highs and lows, the movement consistently ensured that it was never deterred from the objective, and it never succumbed to the challenges it faced from time to time, whether as a result of the conditions beyond its control, actions of the regime, or its own internal weaknesses. Because as the president of the SRC said, there were always internal weaknesses, uh, maybe, they may be more pronounced now, but they're always there. But despite these difficulties, this movement, because of its commitment to the principle of uniting the people in action, because the unity must be unity in action, and the action must be about improving the material conditions of our people, about transforming our economy, about creating a better life for all. It shouldn't be just unity of um, friends or going to parties. It must be unity in action in service of the people to achieve the, N the NDR. To finding, we have to also unite in finding sustainable solutions. The ANC was able to renew itself, its taxes, its policies, and its leadership and cadership. Now, the topic is about factionalism and how should we rescue ourselves from it. I expect you to also answer that question because all of us must participate in answering that question. And when you have deep factions, it's very difficult to unite. And we find ourselves tearing ourselves apart. Um, and as a result, we run the risk of losing our revolutionary discipline, our political consciousness, but our leadership of society. Because as the ANC, and its alliance and wider MTM, we are the leaders of society. But if we're busy fighting amongst ourselves, you can't lead. So we must not allow factionalism to entrench itself, to be so deep, to prevail, and to almost run the, the revolution. The 54th conference should not be interpreted as a mere call, but a revolutionary act. It is a firm belief that only a united ANC and alliance can fulfill the dreams and aspirations of our people towards a democratic and developmental outcomes. We ought to pause and introspect whether we remain on course. We ought also individually and collectively, to ask ourselves whether we are contributing to this tearing a part of the organization or not. And we must all answer the question, the big question that Lenin asked back then, what is to be done? Comrades, as alluded by the title of this event, The Demon of Factionalism, which has been slowly creeping and destroying the essence of the ANC. So much so that the conference itself noted that factionalism has resulted in, I quote, loss of confidence in the ANC. Because if we are factionalized, people should have confidence in who, which part. Social distance, from the people, 
corruption, nepotism, arrogance, elitism, manipulating organizational processes, and abusing state power, close quote. That's what the 54th conference said. Now, what is this factionalism? I think it's a, it's a gross deviation from ANC policies and is rooted in the promotion of self-interest. Careerism above the interest of the people, as Nosipot told us earlier. It is also self-preservation agenda that sees self above all. That agenda is contrary to Marxist philosophy, which dictates that, I quote, from each according to his ability, to each according to his needs. But we see what some call conspicuous consumption, and I think that's what you were talking about earlier. <laughs> it is also driven by those who want to maintain the status quo, because they are those who want to maintain the status quo. And they know that we can prosecute the revolution if we are in factions. To, to keep the status quo, we must be divided. So some even want to return to the old. Indeed, Comrade Chris and his nightmare has come to fruition. And I think that's what one of you said. And I quote him, what I fear is that the liberators emerge as elitists who drive around in Mercedes Benzes and use the resources of this country to live in palaces and to gather riches, close quotes. Thus we must ask, what is our relationship with the people? Are our cadres still embedded amongst our people? Are they living the values of our movement? I want to leave those questions to you. Because you know where we are, we, you know everything. So you must also contribute to say, where, what is our relationship with the people right now? Factionalism also thrives where there is less political consciousness, where there is no revolutionary theory, factionalism thrives. So it's important, comrades, to always ensure that our political consciousness is always improving. And one thing that the ANC did in the past was to teach politics, to make sure that our political consciousness remains alive. And let me quote one of our commissars who was a very good political educator, Ubabu Makshop. And he said, I quote, I'm teaching you politics today, comrades, so that you can use it against me one day when I deviate from the policies of the ANC. <laughs> so as young people, it is your responsibility to tell us when we are deviating to use your political knowledge and tell us when we are deviating from what we should be doing, when we are deviating from the policies of the organization. But also, as young people, you must never allow yourselves to be used in factions. You know, uh, Comrade Banda said, these halls are filled when you are discussing names. You see, before you discuss names in this campus, 
you must know where you want to take this campus to. You must know where you are and where you want to go. And then you can say, you can say So, you are not only the future, you are the present, and you must shape the future that you are going to be inheriting by being active. If you are not organized, you will never have your voice. You must be disciplined, you must be organized, you must be mobilized. But you must have discipline as the young uh, YC Ella, Young Women's Desk was saying here that you must be radical, but you must be disciplined. Now, I think we are at a stage when, where we should recall Comrade O.R. Tambo's words. When he came back to this country and handed over the ANC to us. In his speech, I will quote, he said, before I sit down, I wish to make a few observations. He said, we did not tear ourselves apart because of lack of progress at times. We were always ready to accept our mistakes and to correct them. Because nobody is perfect. Nobody can stand here and say, I've never made a mistake. We all do. But the first step towards solving and correcting your mistakes is acknowledging them and then correct them. Above all, he said, we all succeeded to foster and defend the unit of the ANC and the unit of our people in general. It wasn't a given. It was something that had to be worked for. It's something that had to be achieved. Even in bleak moments, we were never in doubt regarding the winning of freedom. We have never been in doubt that the people's cause shall triumph. Even now, we should never be in doubt that the people's cause will triumph. But it will take much longer if we take longer fighting amongst ourselves. Indeed, as Comrade O.R. said, we have faced difficult times, but we have made sure that we put the interest of the people first. And that's what we must do even now so that we advance and ultimately win the struggle. Because sometimes we all say we've won the struggle, have we? The struggle continues. Yes, we've, we've won the struggle to vote, we are in government, but we have not improved the material conditions of our people sufficiently to say the struggle is over. We have not transformed our economy sufficiently to say the struggle is over. We have not transformed our institutions of higher learning, our judiciary, our... There is nothing that we can say we have transformed perfectly. So the struggle continues, albeit in a different form. The struggle for equality between black and white, but men and women still continues. We still live in a, yes, in the Constitution, there is non-sexism, the Constitution, there is non-racialism, but we know there is still racism, there is still sexism. There is even more than just sexism. Women get abused, women get killed. So those struggles continue. And of course, we must navigate through this period because this period is much more complex 
than the time when we were in, in the struggle. When we were in the struggle, things were black and white. You knew. The lines were drawn. You knew. This is enemy. This is comrade. There was no doubt. But as O.R. said himself at some stage that, or was it O.R. or Mabdi, they were saying, we must wait until we take power. Then we'll see how difficult it is. It was O.R. We, we, we can see now how difficult it is, can't we? Before we could operate underground, we knew somewhere inside, MDM, exile, the military everywhere, but we all knew what we were doing. We all knew where we were going, and we all knew how. But now, it's not the same. We've changed the terrain of struggle. So when we came back, the NC was before it was unbent, we had to re-establish the ANC, to re-establish the Communist Party. And, um, but at the same time, we had to prepare for elections, we had to defend the people against state violence, which was unleashed. Although there were challenges. The movement navigated through those difficulties and through that terrain. Focused, knowing that it's there to serve the people, disciplined and active cadres from different generations. Whilst also balancing the culture of engagement, democracy, robust debate, premised on the strategy and tactics and directed at the unity in action. And that's why we were able to make the breakthroughs that we made. Of course, we must also remember that the, it was a negotiated settlement. Negotiations, by definition, means there are compromises that are made, by definition. So it's not that people were selling out or anything. <laughs> if you don't win outrightly, <laughs> if you don't win outrightly, defeat your enemy, you sit and you negotiate, you will make compromises. But that doesn't mean that we can't pursue the goals of our, of our struggle. And of course, that gave us the opportunity and that provided a beachhead to advance our strategic objective of that era, which ultimately defined as the creation of a national democratic society. So comrades, are we building that national democratic society? I would say without fear of contradiction that it is not possible to build this society without a united and renewed organization. The, the renewal of our organization must occupy the middle piece of our total liberation. Thus, we must pay attention to the political education, to campaigns, to community work, cater development, which necessitates a skills revolution, and I'm sure you're here to pursue that, as well as discipline. And patriotism. Because you can have all that if you are not patriotic, you will not be useful to our people. It is not, it, it, is it not time to ask ourselves, what is an ANC cadre without politics? And how do we address that situation? I think this is especially important to note, even as leaders, we can go wrong from time to time. 
However, it is our political understanding that gives us the ability to self-correct. That is why cadre development is a core and should be the core of our activities. It must be undertaken on a continuous basis, not ad hoc, in all structures of our movement, from the branch level all the way to the most senior level. According to our CADA policy, ANC CADAs are required to, maybe I should have left this to you to answer. They are required to have revolutionary consciousness and discipline. Commitment to serve and love for the people. Be dedicated and humble. Humility is an important value in a revolutionary. Committed to self-improvement, as we are all doing, the understanding of their task, understanding of our struggle, and understanding the motive forces. I think someone was, had started <laughs> talking about the motive forces. But also, we must, they were also required to understand and have gender consciousness as cadres. Must have national and gender consciousness. Moreover, ANC cadres must be committed to democracy and collective processes. Now, everyone in the ANC should believe in collective decision making. The decisions of the ANC must come from the collective, not from one faction or the other, but they must come from the collective. And the collective can only take, we can only take collective decisions if we sit and debate issues without fear or favor or prejudice. Free to speak, free to speak your mind, and if you are wrong, you will be corrected. It doesn't matter what you think of the other comrades. But when you are discussing ANC issues, you must listen to what they say and respond to what they say, not to who you think they are. One of our leaders once said, you know, you must be ready to debate with everyone, including a person who comes from a mental institution. You must talk, debate with them. You must only worry when they start taking matches and <laughs> <laughs> then that's when you must worry. But as long as they are debating issues with you, you shouldn't worry. So can we still remember that at the centenary in twenty twelve we declared that decade the decade of the cadre. We are we're still in that decade, aren't we? And we committed to revitalize all aspects of our cadre policy, recruitment, cadre development, deployment, accountability, as well as cadre preservation. So is that what we are doing during this decade of the CADA. I'm leaving that question to you. Because CADA development is not only at the top structure, it's across the ANC. But we must also build, develop, and retain the CADAs who are ideologically rooted and schooled in ANC progressive politics. However, these comrades also have a responsibility to skill themselves 
and be competent to undertake assignments, tasks with discipline and high ethics. They must be conscientious and committed to continuous self-improvement. If we have high ethics, we will not have corruption. If we are disciplined, we will be able... You see, if, if also discipline in the movement should be fair and just. Discipline, if I do something wrong, you must discipline me. If the president of the Women's League did do the same thing which is wrong, you must discipline him. If the SRC president does something wrong, discipline. If, even at home, you won't have harmony in the house if you have one, one type of discipline for one child and another discipline for another, another discipline for the other. The children must know you love them, you build them, you discipline when they've done something wrong, then there'll be harmony. There won't be discord. But let me, because I'm talking to intelligentsia and future intelligentsia, and let me say, Chris Rani said something about the intelligentsia. And I want to quote what he said. He said, an intelligentsia, which is selfless, which is not just concerned about making money, creating a comfortable situation for themselves, but an intelligentsia which has lots of time for the struggle of the oppressed people. Yes. He had lots of time for the struggle of the oppressed people. That, that's what you must take from him. That, that's what you must take going forward. Yes, succeed in what you are doing. Yes, get a job, but have time for the struggling masses. Have time for the working class. Have time for the poor. Have time for the downtrodden. Because until everyone has a better life, the struggle is not over. We must also ask ourselves whether the characterization of the motive forces remain relevant and whether the motive forces that we defined are still the motive forces that we work with. <laughs> or are we also having amongst us people who see the ANC as a vehicle that will not transform the economy or the lives of people, but that will transform their, themselves. We see a bit of that in the organization, but who are the poor? Who are the unemployed? Because if we look at the triple challenges that we face today, it's poverty, it's unemployment, it's inequality. We are amongst the most unequal countries in the world. And where there is gross inequality, there is also violent crime. If you look across the world, if you look at the studies across the world, they'll tell you that. If a country is poor, but there isn't um, very wide inequalities, you may find crime, but you, may, you will not find a lot of violent crime. But in this country, Inequality is still there. Comes from the apartheid, we've not been able to deal with it. There is obscene opulence on one side and 
squalor on the other. That's our reality. And that's what we must deal with. And that's why we must ask ourselves, what is our relationship with our people? Are we addressing the issues of the working class? The ANC came to power together with the workers. And I would say yes, but there's still a lot more to be done. So what's causing a rift and waning influence of the ANC amongst our people? Why are our people, they still support us, but not to the same extent. We must ask ourselves why. We must ask ourselves why. And we'll find the answers, and if we correct that, our people will still will come back to us. But of course, they are not waiting for us. Sometimes when I look at our election, we win, and it's very good. But there's a big number of people who don't vote. And I often ask myself, what if these people wake up and decide to vote for another party? Because there are millions and millions of people who register, but they don't vote. And we must be concerned about that as well. And we must bring them back to voting. And of course, to vote for the ANC. Today, we are like this because of COVID. Somebody in the rural areas was this COVID. Says, Fagi, for you not seeing, go home. But that's, that's what it is. We have to wear masks, we have to social distance because of the pandemic. And it has had a lot of impact on our economy, which was already ailing. It's not like it came when our economy was robust. So it has exposed our triple challenges of poverty, unemployment, inequality, even hunger in some instances. So this is, has also increased the class divide. It was very glaring during the lockdown when schools were closed. Some of the children were learning, were schooling online, when others were not. So that class divide was very clear because some kids live in areas, the majority still live in areas where there is no network, there is no broadband, so, they, so we must attend to that. Because we cannot expect the poor, the hungry, the marginalized to continue to occupy the fort of patience. We used to say our patience is not unlimited. So the patience of the masses, we must make sure that we don't stretch it to the breaking point. We must make sure that we do things that will improve their lot. So COVID is a problem, but there is a silver lining. Why don't you take COVID as a time to reset? Let's use, to use it as a reset button to reset the way we look at the economy, the way we look at uh, connectiveness, the way we look at climate change, the way we look at everything. Isn't it, there was no COVID then, but our economy was ailing during the 54th conference when the radical economic transformation was adopted and then land without 
um, expropriation without compensation was adopted, all those things will contribute to the economy. And the president has said we must go into economic recovery. But sh sh should we then not use this as a silver lining and reset what we do? Now, how do we do that? I will just use very simple examples. I, I live in a rural area, my, my parents' home, and I have a home there, but I also have a home in the urban area. In the rural areas, we don't have sufficient land, but there is some land. Most of it is not even utilized. Simple things, when you ask the people in the rural areas, why aren't you using your fields? They say, oh, it's not fenced. We don't have sufficient money to fence. The pastures where the animals eat is not fenced, so they come and eat our plants. So as part of restarting the economy, dealing with unemployment, why don't we say, OK, young people, we train them to make fence, open a, a small factory where they can make a fence. And then some of them get hired to do the fencing. You create employment, you create uh, resources, you improve the community. Our roads in the rural areas are bad. The country can't afford to tie every road. But there are lots of stones in this country. Why can't we say, OK, we form cooperatives in different localities. We train young people how to make paving material from the stones, train them to pave the roads, train them to maintain the road, and we'll pay less as government. But we'll be creating entrepreneurs, we'll be creating jobs, but we'll be improving the communities as well. With agriculture, every school, there is school feeding. Why can't we encourage, get the fields fenced, encourage women, young people, people in the village to plant and to supply the schools and get women from the locality to be the ones that cater, cook for the children. If they can cook breakfast and dinner for them, why can't they cook lunch for them? If they cook for our weddings and funerals, why can't they cook lunch for the schools that the government pays for? So, yes, there is no money, but we can utilize the money we have to create. The government procures lots of services. We procure uniforms for the defense force, the police, the whoever. Why can't we? President of the Women's League, train ourselves, young people, form co-ops, challenge us as government that we are here, we can do the uniforms. We can do the hospital linen. Who can make a sheet, really? So, so that that's the way of also transforming the economy. Instead of buying from the big companies, you start buying from, you're creating entrepreneurs, you're creating jobs, you're also creating prosperity in the, in the communities. So it's, we can do it. We should do it. There are lots of things that we can do. I always tell this story. One time, a few years ago, there was a, um, uprising, protests in, in Kimberley, in, ha, in Haalishiwe. That's a township in Kimberley. Then after a few days, 
People were complaining that they are short of bread because the trucks that bring bread into Hanishiwa could not come in because of the protest. <laughs> now surely we can make our own bread, eat it fresh, war is still hot. Mm. Many countries actually. If you go to any country, whether it's France, Germany, wherever, you can actually go into a small bakery and buy bread, still warm and the butter or the margarine melts on it. But here, we have to eat bread that we don't know where, when it was baked, travels kilometers, sits on supermarket shelves. I'm not saying we shouldn't buy that, we are used to it, but let's think differently. Let's think differently. So I'm saying that we can change even with the little money we have. We must also believe in ourselves. You say we must decolonize education, eh? We must also decolonize the mind. Our mind must be decolonized, we must be confident, we must know we can, we can change this country, even with the little resources we have. So, but the objective should always be uplifting the marginalized, the poor, the working class. And the YCL, the Communist Party, has even the bigger responsibility. As Marx and Engels said, the special role of yourselves, I quote, on the one hand, practically, the most advanced and resolute section of the working class parties of every country that section which pushes forward all others. Are you that section as the Communist Party and as the YCL? On the other hand, theoretically, they have over the great mass of proletariat the advantage of clearly understanding the line of march, the conditions and the ultimate general result of the proletariat movement. Are you that advanced? You should be, and you should aspire to be if you are not. <laughs> so, so we must therefore be inspired by Comrade Krisan in everything we do. As he explained his affinity towards socialism by saying, and I quote, given my background, most of us, well, maybe not you, but our generation, our background was no different from his. He says, I was attracted by ideas and the philosophy which had the bias towards the working class, which had its stated objective, the uplifting of the people on the ground. Close quote. And he continues to say, I did not get involved in the workers' struggle out of theory alone. It was a combination of theory and my own class background. I never faltered in my belief in socialism, despite all the problems currently. For me, that belief is strong because that is still the life of the majority of the people with whom I share a common background. So as long as the people live the life they are living today, of course, there's always room for socialism. And like Chris Rani, he was ready to be on, in the forefront. But also, he was ready to speak his mind he was ready to discuss. He was patriotic. 
like the Cubans will say, homeland or death. That's why they've survived for so long. But they've survived because they've invested in their own people. Education, health, especially. For us, the struggle is clear. What we should achieve is clear. Maybe how is the one that is not so clear. And the how is the one that we must discuss. But Che Guevara once said that the revolutionary's task of educating and feeding youngsters, educating the army, distributing the lands to the people who work those lands without receiving benefit from it. This can only be achieved through an integrated developmental and community-based approach. The peasants must always be held technically, economically, culturally. This is Che's words. The gorilla fighter must be a sort of guiding angel who has fallen into the zone, helping the poor always. So, I think we must just ask ourselves, are we doing these things? Let me come back to the Communist Party now. One of its discussion document titled Building Cooperatives as a Concrete Expression of Building People's Power in the Economy. Remember that discussion document? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you will read on this. You, you will read it? Yes. Yeah, so okay. <laughs> <laughs> that paper uh, is very instructive, but I'll just quote a little. It says that cooperatives existing by themselves within capitalist economies and isolated from the tactical and strategic framework of progressive forces are doomed to either degenerate or collapse. Mm -hmm. It also says, however, this does not mean that these are not viable and cannot be part of a wider strategic response to transcending capitalism. So, we must build these cooperatives in communities, must make sure we nurture, we support them. Because for honey, what is important is the continuation of the struggle. And we must accept that the struggle is always continuing under different conditions. What happens to people in the area? then service of self will thrive. Mm. Government should not be the biggest employer in, 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 in a community or in a municipality. People must be assisted to be entrepreneurs. Even out a living for themselves in their, in their countries. But it's not because we are stupid. It's not because we don't have talent is spread across evenly. If you take a hundred French children, a hundred South Africans, a hundred Nigerians, a hundred Somalis, a hundred Bangladeshi, talent is evenly. What makes the difference is what do you do with that talent? Do you develop it? So we are as good as anyone. But here, in the continent and in South Africa, we have a paradoxic situation. We are a rich continent. We, Africa is a rich continent with poor Africans. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I will excuse you because you had called upon the deputy to come and, uh, and, and preside. I don't know what happened to her. <laughs> she came for a short while and disappeared. <laughs>
But that shouldn't be the case. Women and men are equal. They must have equal opportunities in everything. But some people think women are inferior. They are attachments to men. No, it's not the case. Let me tell you something. You don't even remember what was happening to you when you were one year old. Who can say they remember? Nobody here or anywhere in the world. It's their mothers who know. It's their mothers who brought them to this world. It's their mothers who nurtured them, who did everything for them when they couldn't do anything for themselves. Yeah. They brought them up to be the big men, famous men, rich men, successful men. And then these men turn around and say these women are inferior. How does that happen? How does, how does that work? The person who's brought you up, who's made you what you are, is suddenly inferior to you. I. Comrade Bataga Vumi. Comrade Bataga Vumi. Nana Vumi. We are progressing. We are progressive young men. And Vumi. But also, it's not just for charity to, to, to invest in, and show emancipated. It's also for the benefit of the country. If the country works on half its talent, how will it ever be competitive? How will it ever reach its full potential? Research tells us that even the capitalists, they are beginning to say companies that have uh, more senior um, women in management are mo become more competitive than those who don't have. So that must tell you something. But it also research that was done not here, somewhere else, not in South Africa, tells us that if you give resources to men and women, if you give equal resources to a man and a woman, and you sit back and see how they'll spend it, the man will use a lot of that money in the family. 30% of it will go to the family. Where does the 70% go? <laughs> the woman will spend 70% or more of that income in the family. It's true. The woman will think about food for the kids, school for the kids, clothing, medicine for the kids, before she thinks about himself. I don't want to say what men. You think I reach out. You know it. You know what they think of. I won't say it myself. So, comrades, we have a big responsibility. Now, education, let's, let's talk about education. Education has been part of our struggle. When we were students, when I was in the student movement, Sasso, we fought the apartheid regime on many issues, but education was the forefront. Because education opens your mind, opens the world for you, Education actually is the fastest equalizer. If we were to educate, skill all our kids, we will quickly equalize. It's the fastest equalizer. 
when you are sitting in that cockpit in the plane as a pilot, you are equal to the other pilot who came from a rich family. There's no difference. Eh? So, yes, they may have trust funds from great grandfather, whatever, but at that level, you are equal, doing us getting the same remuneration, same respect. So education is the fastest equal. And the Freedom Charter, we all know, doors of learning and culture shall be open. But what does that mean? It means the government shall discover, develop, and encourage national talent. That's what it says. For the enhancement of our cultural life, the aim of education shall be to teach the youth to love their people, their culture, to honor human brotherhood, and I will add sisterhood, liberty, and peace. Education shall be free, compulsory, universal, and equal for all children. Higher education and technical training shall be opened to all by means of state allowances and scholarships awarded on the basis of merit. So now we're not quite there, but we're almost there. We must ensure that there is free education for the working class, for the poor, for the marginalized. And there's a term that says missing middle. I think we must also address that. If we can address that, then we'll be very close to what you want, isn't it? So, but the, the ANC is willing, is, is discussing that matter, is willing to, to work, but at least for the marginalized, the poor, and the working class, there should be no child according to ANC policy and government that does not reach its full potential in terms of education and skills. That's an advancement. That's an advancement from where we were. So we, we are discussing the issue of the missing middle and also education is one thing that is able to break the cycle of intergenerational poverty and inequality. Because in South Africa, you find the grandfather was poor, the grandchild is poor, the father is poor. But they sh it shouldn't be like that. That cycle of intergenerational poverty should be broken by education and skills. And of course, entrepreneurship. Oh, I thought you were saying I must stop. I'm, a, I'm about to stop. I'm, I'm going to stop. <laughs> but, so education is very important. But education in our situation should also go with political consciousness. You should all go and vote. You see, Politics decides where you go to school, what you learn, what you, 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 where you go to hospital, what service you get. So you must clean water, whether you get it or not, electricity, whether you get it or not, a job, a business, land. So politics should not be something for the few. It should be for all of us. You can do it here at work. You must be that kind of intelligentsia. You must be that kind of professional that cares about the people. And that's politics. Sometimes people think politics is about fighting for positions or fighting for jobs. No, politics is about a way of life for our people. 
So it's important. But education for you is even more important at this point in time. So, comrades, if we unite in action towards a better life for our people, there'll be less factions. If we unite to ensure that people in the rural areas are able to create businesses there, family businesses, cooperatives, and so on, where will we find time to fight? Because we'll all be busy working. Mm -hmm. There'll be no time to fight. If we understand and stick to the principles of the ANC and work together, this organization is going to be renewed and united. But if we don't, if we lose our revolutionary compass, we don't know who's the motive force, who's not, <laughs> then that's when the fighting will be. So the revolution I like quoting Chair because I think he was one of the most prominent revolutionaries mm -hmm. I've ever come across. He said, the revolution is made by men and we or women, but men or women must forge his or her revolutionary spirit from day to day. You can't say today you have a revolutionary spirit, tomorrow you have forgotten it. <laughs> It has to be forged from day to day, all the time. And you must leave work like a revolutionary. Doesn't mean you, make, you don't make mistakes, you do, we're, we're human. But the focus must always be there, that we are there for the people, we are the servants of the people. Our bosses, are the people. If you are a minister, the president appoints you, but he is not your boss. The people are the boss. <laughs> he himself, the people have put him there to serve them. So we all are servants of the people. But sometimes we forget, we close our phones, or we say we don't answer a phone and a number we don't know. How are you supposed to know all the numbers of the citizens? <laughs> so if you close your phone, Charlotte McClake is burning, you can't be found. Close the phone, or you don't answer phones that you don't know. And are you serving only the people you know that are in your contact list? <laughs> no. So we must all have that spirit. And Uma Makeke said the spirit of self must be killed. Must not live above the people, we must live amongst them. Yeah. And when we rise, we rise with them. <laughs> When you climb a ladder, whether it's a corporate ladder, wherever, when you get to the top, don't kick back the ladder, because other people must still climb on it. So let's kill the spirit of self, kill the spirit of factionalism. Doesn't mean that we won't disagree. Because sometimes when you disagree with someone, they think you are a faction. Mm. No. Even twins, identical twins, differ on something. Differing does not mean you are a faction. You are a faction if you start organizing there, coming as a group, pushing a particular line, not listening to others. 
no debating issues. You just stick to your factional line. And then when there is election, and then you're supposed to nominate somebody, you say, <laughs> <laughs> so, comrades, we all have a lot of work to do as comrades. We must all work towards strengthening the organization. We must all work towards uniting the organization in action, towards creating a better life for our people.